Do you know, I normally try to read a little before I go to bed, but I generally fall asleep very quickly. But this little new book I've got is so interesting. I love facts and figures. I'd like to share the introduction with you. It's very interesting. Nothing in all the world would be more disastrous news for Hitler than to hear that we British understood the stupendous power which lies in the trifling economies we can make in our daily lives. Hitler knows perfectly well that this country will never lack that quality of courage which inspires us to any sacrifice once the issue is clear. But his plan of campaign in the Battle of the Atlantic is built on the fervent hope that the issue will not be clear enough to stir us to the concerted action which might well alter the whole course of the war. Hitler's one chance is so to restrict the flow of ships to our shores that we cannot accumulate the arms we need. Our chance is so to relieve those ships and men we have that they may be used to supply still more tanks and planes and guns with which to smash him. But there are two points which must be quite clear before we can wholeheartedly do our part in blasting Hitler's hopes. The first is to realise the extent to which our war effort can be increased by the mass elimination of a certain amount of waste. The second point is to realise the importance of religiously doing our part, however small, rather than leaving it to the next person. For example, if you try to reason out how much shipping would be saved if you don't strike a match, or if you grow a few cabbages, the saving is so ridiculously small it doesn't seem worth bothering about. Now, of course, that's not quite the right way of looking at it. It's no use saying, how much would the country benefit if I do this or don't do that? The thing to do is to ask yourself the question, what will it mean, my country, if all 46 million of us do so and so? It is not easy to think collectively. We were not brought up that way. However, we're having to learn a lot of new tricks in this war. And one of the best Hitler smashing tricks is to form the habit of thinking and acting collectively. Today, we are faced by the inescapable fact that everything is directly or indirectly part of the country's resources. And as these resources are used up, either they must be replaced, which requires manpower, materials or shipping space, or else someone must go short. We must think of a hat or a fountain pen, a loaf of bread or a gallon of petrol, not so much in terms of what they can cost us personally, but rather in terms of what they are worth to the country in manpower or materials or shipping space. Just as every man in the forces has duties he's expected to perform, so has every one of us. As part of the 46 million people in these islands who are now fighting the Battle of the Atlantic. The duties that fall to us are to devise every possible means of avoiding waste day by day in every way we can. There will, of course, be a few unconscientious objectors who will leave it to others, excusing themselves with the thought that my contribution is so small, it will make no difference anyway. These few may be on the sidelines cheering when it is all over, but they can never march with those to whom the generations that follow will owe so much 
their heritage of freedom, which you will have helped to save. I think I'm going to turn in now. Night-night.